All right, all right, all right. We are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just to kind of reflect our first segment, we talked about our WWE NXT review. Jordan Grace blasts open the forbidden door and is fighting for Roxanne Perez's NXT World Women's Championship at NXT Battleground, kind of creating a possibility, maybe the potential of a double champion where WWE would have to pay attention to what TNA is doing uh, week after week, which is awesome because I've recently been studying the sh- the crap out of uh, you know TNA. Absolutely love it. I'm becoming a huge fan of uh, TNA Ring of Honor, and uh, you know, kind of growing rapidly. You have the National Wrestling Alliance Power, you know, airing on Tuesday on the CW. We will go over results of that uh i think tomorrow when we talk about thursday night wrestling because i don't know why like they're every thursday i kind of like to jumble up and talk about every wrestling promotion besides wwe because wwe is kind of just so huge it's a huge entertainment conglomerate sometimes it's good to kind of take a break it's a good you know i i know for me and my rest my, my professional wrestling health it's done you know it's, it's done a body good I absolutely love, like, once when I'm reading, like, wrestling headlines before I started, like, you know, heavily researching everything. I was like, dude, like, who the hell are these guys? I'll be scrolling and, sh- and stuff. And then, like, now I kind of look at it. I'm like, oh, my God. Hell, yeah. That's, dude. I, I absolutely love Mark Briscoe. That guy's dope. And then, like, I don't know. It just made me – I feel like it made me a better wrestling fan and also kind of, you know, kind of opened my horizons. And I'm watching these – Watching these things and it just reminds me of just old school wrestling and it kind of draws me in. I'm a huge WWF Attitude Era kind of guy. So just, you know, authenticity. Obviously, you kind of had WWE go a little mainstream, especially when they when they went to uh, Fox where they had those, you know, those big, you know, pictures. Roman Reigns like up. Like, you're like, yeah, dude, that's cool and all. But I don't know. As a wrestling fan, that's the reason why I kind of fell in love with WCW and TNA circa 2006 to 2010. Uh, But yeah, so let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about AEW Dynamite Preview. But before we jump into that, I want to remind you guys to use the tips and donations link at the gsmcpodcast.net. Uh, give me your questions, give me your statements, give me your predictions, and, you know, just your thoughts toward wrestling in general. Tell me, you know, how you think... You know, TNA is going to go moving forward with Jordan Grace. Tell me how you like WWE NXT. Tell me what you think is better for WWE. Let me know if you think Tony Khan is a, you know, the better than Vince McMahon as an owner. These are some things in the chat that I definitely want to hear from you guys. Uh, You know, or if anything, just give me a quick shout out. To say, hey, yo, dude, it's uh, Bart Simpson from Springfield, you know, Illinois. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, just ultimately, we'd love to hear from you guys. The podcast is a hell of a lot better once, you know, audience is engaging 110%. So, like I said, use the tips and donations link. Just put your questions up on top so I can see it, so I can talk about it. It really helps to show peace, love, and positivity at the GSMC Sports Network is what it's all about. Again, the link is at the GSMC uh, podcast.net. So jumping into some AEW Dynamite, we are at the Kia Forum in Inglewood, California, and I want to kick myself in the face because it's right in my backyard. It's right in my backyard. It's about, it's about an hour and 45 minutes away. Well, LA traffic kind of sucks, so two and a half hours away. But, you know, especially with the AEW Double or Nothing Fallout kind of happening, you know, you had the anarchy in the arena. You had the match between Edge, well, Adam Copeland and Malachi Black. You had uh, Mercedes Monet pick up the victory. Chris Statlander turning her back on uh, Willow. And oh, man, I, would, I wish I would have got tickets for that. Would have been awesome. Would have been dope. So, like I said, we're going to see the aftermath of AEW's Double or Nothing. Today, uh, we have a Forbidden Door Casino Gauntlet match. We're going to find out who Swerve Strickland will be fighting at Forbidden Door for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I can't wait to see who's involved because much like, you know, some of the Gauntlet matches in WWE, I absolutely love WWE. I'm not scrutinizing it at all. I'm not trying to throw shade. But this Casino Royale Gauntlet match is just so cool. It's just so cool. Instead of people getting eliminated, uh, people keep coming in, keep coming, keep coming in, keep coming in. You can have like 10 guys in the ring and the best, you know, you're trying to finish this match as quick as you can. So you don't know who's going to show up, who's going to win. I'm not too sure. Someone who's worthy of AEW, you know, I don't know if Adam Cole's going to find his way back into the ring, kind of having like in him and MJF kind of stare down. And I don't believe MJF will get a title shot that quick. Although... I don't really know who really AEW has to kind of fight Swerve at this moment. That would make, like, you know, that would smash the box office. But like I said, um, it's in the title. It's in the title. Casino Gauntlet Match Forbidden Door. 
definitely thinking somebody from New Japan Professional Wrestling will step up. Somebody from Ring of Honor possibly possibly might step up or maybe you might have like a double whammy in terms of you know tna maybe somebody from tna comes you know like they did with the wwe and jordan grace that, that that's a huge possibility as well and to be honest i would absolutely love that that'd be huge for tna uh you know that'd be awesome uh, and then we're going to talk about you know uh then we're going to see chris statlander explains her betrayal can't wait to watch that we have aew dynamite uh live right now on tnt uh, or TBS, because I know right now the hockey game is on. But, uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Next, we can see mercedes Monet Championship Entertainment Celebration. Should be pretty cool to find out what she has to say, although I wasn't a huge fan of her. Uh, beating Willow of Nightingale for the TBS Championship. Kind of wish, you know, but it kind of sets up. Uh, the way they kind of did it was great, but I didn't want mercedes Monet really to kind of get a pinfall really that quick. And it was her first match. It was her debut in, uh, you know, TBS. And Willow Nightingale has been so amazing. She's been so great for AEW, inside and outside of the ring. She's a role model. And she's out there, you know, trying to make a difference, you know, visiting, you know, different parts of demographic, you know, and poverty and stuff like that. Showing that you do, if you put your mind to it, you can get out of what you're going through, like, right now. Like, you can establish hope. You can use that hope and build momentum toward the future that you ultimately want to create for you, your your, your family, but most importantly, just like your future, which is, you know, kind of what, you know, kind of, that's kind of like a morality of life. But that's not what this podcast is. Let's keep, you know, stick to wrestling. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so we have Adam Copeland injured with a torn uh, tibia. He needs surgery. He needs surgery. You saw the jump. You saw him land 20 feet, and he basically landed on his legs. Didn't really put that much force or didn't really put Malachi Black in that much jeopardy, which is kind of cool. Like, when I watched the replay, and I was like, dude, this guy's an idiot. Why'd you do that? But then, like, coming down from 20 feet, falling down on a wrapped barbed wire, Malachi Black, it could have probably been a lot worse, and, you know, it was already anticipated. But he tore his tibia, so it's told that he's going to have his TNT championship either straight stripped or he's going to go out and relinquish his championship which is kind of the right move dude you're 58 years old love adam Copeland. you've done so much for the wwe you've done so much for the wwf you restored the tag team division within the wwf with the hardy boys the dudley boys and edge and christian with the tlc match so dude you've done enough you've done enough bro you you've, you've acted in movies you've been in tv shows I, I'm not trying to hint at Adam Copeland retiring, but if he did, just know, man, you've kind of done your work. You've done your work. We respect you. Wrestling fans, we love you. So uh, Adam Copeland most likely going to lose the TNT championship either by force or either by, you know, given choice. Uh, next, we see Swerve Strickland against Kill Switch. Kill Switch, a part of Patriarchy, which I kind of thought was going to end as soon as he beat Christian. So it should be interesting to kind of see how AEW kind of goes about this because we're gonna find out his chant, uh, his uh, number one contender tonight, in like in that Casino Royale match tonight, the Gauntlet match. So um, it should be huge. Should be pretty freaking huge. Kill Switch is you know no one to kind of be undermined. This guy's huge. This guy's scary. This guy's brutal. So I think Swerve, you know, definitely has his hands full. Shouldn't, you know, count his ducks before they hatch, so to speak. Count their chickens before they hatch. I don't know why I always want to keep saying ducks. Maybe I'm a huge ducks fan, I guess you can say. Not the hockey team, because I think they suck. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to, you know, rattle any bridges or anything like that. Next, we're going to see the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion uh, John Moxley fight an Eliminator match against Rocky Romero. We're also going to see Soraya. Uh, from the outcast uh, fight, Mariah May, Mariah May trying to, you know, trying to get a little revenge on how the outcast has been constantly disrespecting the timeless Tony Storm. The timeless Tony Storm retained her AEW World Women's Championship at AEW Double or Nothing, and she just continues to impress. She cuts good promos. She has good matches. She's definitely one of the best women superstars, you know, in that whole locker room. So, you know. Kudos to you, dude. And, and then lastly, we have Don Callis. Don Callis will offer Orange Cassidy a contract, which ultimately I think is uh, Cassidy's gonna rip it up or throw it in his face and be like, dude, like I don't need you. Like, what the F? Like, you were trying to like you were trying to help the uh, Trent Beretta. Like, what the hell? Like, I don't want any part of that, dude. So uh, yeah. So we're okay. Look, guys, let's go ahead and move on. We are done talking about AEW Dynamite. 
on right now. Check it out. Don't leave any spoilers in the chat. Um, you know, if you do, you know, it better be something really juicy. I'm just kidding. No. Um, but, uh, um, next, we're going to move on to our third segment. We're going to talk about Jordan Grace enters the Forbidden Door. She recently been seen on WWE NXT last night. So let's go ahead and dive on into that. So do not go anywhere. 